What's up guys, this video is a bit longer, so feel free to jump around to different sections of the video that cover different parts of how to run GPT-3 and the background of GPT-3. If you're at all interested in AI, you may recall that last year, GPT-3 came out. It was the natural progression from GPT-2. It had several improvements, but the main one being its massive size, as you can see. This is GPT-3. And this little tiny thing is GPT-2. What makes this so amazing is that GPT-2 was considered larger at its time. And now GPT-3 makes GPT-2 look very, very tiny in comparison. If you recall, when GPT-2 was announced, it was, quote, too dangerous to release to the public. Of course, eventually GPT-2 was eventually released. And it ended up being that this too dangerous technology was more of a marketing thing than a reality. However, with the release of GPT-3, again the question arises of whether it is ethical or safe to release powerful new AIs to the public. There are many different sizes of GPT-3, with the largest being the bar graph I showed with 175 billion parameters. And the amazing video that's on screen now, Eric Elliott sits down and interviews GPT-3 with a variety of questions. Throughout the interview, it is often hard to believe that he is not talking to a human. I recommend watching the video after or before you continue watching this video. Thus, with this massive performance increase, it may not be surprising to find out that unlike Passworks, OpenAI has not open sourced GPT-3. Whether for safety concerns, which while I'm still hesitant on this, I find it much more believable than GPT-2, or the more likely reason being that they can profit massively from this model. However, in the past few months, an open source group called Eleuther AI, sorry if I mispronounced that, has taken steps to reproduce the results of GPT-3. This GPT-3-like model is called GPT-NEO. There are two different model sizes for GPT-NEO. There is the 1.3 billion parameter model and the 2.7 billion parameter model. The 2.7 billion parameter model is the same size as GPT-ADA. GPT-ADA is the smallest GPT-3 model offered for commercial API access. However, as we can see, GPT-NEO 2.7 billion parameters seems to be performing better than GPT-3-ADA. You can download these pre-trained models on the GitHub repo, and with slight tweakings of the code, you can run these on high-end GPUs like an RTX 3090, with the main limiting factor being the need for lots of VRAM. There is also the option to split the model over several GPUs, but I have not explored this. Originally, I was going to go over how to run these models from this GitHub repo, but even more recently was GPT-NEO added to Hugging Face. Hugging Face, if you're not aware, is a transformer library used for NLP tasks. Very, very useful. And by using Hugging Face, we are no longer required to have a GPU for inferences. Though a GPU would still be useful for speeding up inferences or for any fine tuning we may want to do to the model. Thus, for the rest of the video, I will be going over GPT-NEO and how to use it using a Jupyter Notebook. The only requirements being that you have Anaconda installed. Anaconda being a package manager for Python libraries. I will get started by creating the Jupyter Notebook. Anaconda create, let's call it Jupyter GPT and Python 3.7. Yes. We can now enter the conda environment by doing conda activate Jupyter GPT. We can now install Jupyter by doing conda install Jupyter. We now have a conda environment with Jupyter installed. The last thing we'll need to do before opening the notebook is install a kernel so that we can use our con environment inside of the notebook. To do this, once inside the environment, we'll type something along like the following, with the most important part being the name flag, 
This will be what we'll look for when inside of the notebook. We need to make sure that the notebook is in the same folder that we are currently in. But given that, we can now type Jupyter Notebook to start the notebook. The notebook is now started. Here we see all the files in the directory, and we can see the notebook that I prepared for this video. By clicking on the notebook, we can enter the notebook and start learning how GPT-3 works. Once inside the notebook, the first thing we need to do is change the kernel. To do this, go up here to kernel, click change kernel, and do the one that we created. In this case, it was GPT-vid. Without doing this, you may experience issues installing and importing packages from the notebook. However, after doing this, you should be good. If you still have issues, restarting the kernel may solve it. To do this, you can stop the kernel using the stop button and restart it hitting the restart button. At that point, your issues were most likely fixed as I ran to this issue, but doing this fixed my issue. Now that we have our environment set up and our notebook ready to go, Let's now walk through the notebook and see what's going on. First, we need to install PyTorch. I took this directly off of PyTorch's installation page. The model we are using is a PyTorch based model. That is a plus because it can be well integrated with other Torch libraries and Torch programs that we currently have. Here we're installing it now. Next, we need to install Hugging Face. As I previously mentioned, Hugging Face is a popular transformer library. It should take a few seconds, and since we already have it installed, it will quickly be finished. Next, we need to handle our imports. From Transformers, which is the Hugging Face library, we are importing GPT Neo for Causa LM and GPT 2 Tokenizer, as well as Torch. GPT Neo for Causa LM is what's going to run and load the model while GPT-2 tokenizer is the tokenizer that will be used to convert our words into tokens and then our output from the model back into words. It uses the same one as GPT-2 in this implementation. Next, we need to select which model we want. In this case, we're going to use the 2.7 billion parameter model. However, by simply swapping out the 2.7 for our 1.3, we can use the smaller model if we desire a quicker time that the model takes to process our input. If it's your first time loading either model, it can take several minutes to download the model onto your computer. These models, especially the 2.7 billion parameter model, are very large, so give it some time. As I mentioned before, to run these models, you don't necessarily need a GPU. However, for fast inferences, a GPU is highly recommended. For the larger 2.7 billion model, you need roughly 13 gigabytes of VRAM, limiting your options to professional cards or the RTX 3090. The 1.3 billion parameter model takes slightly less VRAM, of 7.5 gigabytes of VRAM. This opens up many more options and can be ran on many modern day high-end GPUs like the 2070, 2080, 3080, 3070, and such. The next several steps check your computer's hardware and checks how much VRAM you have. We first install Pi NVML to check how much VRAM is available. By running this code snippet, we can see that my GPU, RTX 3090, has 23.9 gigabytes of free VRAM. Thus, as we can see by looking at this code snippet, if we have greater than 13.5 gigabytes of VRAM and are using the larger model, we'll put it on the GPU or if we're using the smaller model and have more than 7.5 gigabytes, we'll also use the GPU. If we don't have a GPU or we don't have enough VRAM, we're not going to use the GPU. These two code blocks are for ease of use and to allow us to use this AI model faster if we had the hardware available on our computer. We now need to load the tokenizer for the model. As I previously mentioned, the tokenizer is used to convert our words into a format the model understands, called tokens. Conversely, once the model gives its output, the tokenizer is then used again to convert that output into words. At this point, we are almost done. The next step is to give a prompt to the model 
that we want the model to then predict future words off of. For this case, let's do something pretty basic. Let's type in, what is the meaning of life? I wonder what an AI thinks about that. The next part is pretty basic as well. We need to tell the AI how many tokens we want it to generate off of our input. The max number of tokens for GPT-3 is 2048. Important to note is that not all words are one token. Some words are split up into many tokens. In our case, let's say 200. At this point, the input is then tokenized, and if we are using a GPU, it is put onto the GPU. We then generate the tokens using the input, as well as the output length, and this variable called temperature. There are many optional things to include in this generate step, but I'll briefly go over temperature. While not 100% accurate, the closer temperature is to 1, the more quote-unquote creative it will be. Meanwhile, the closer to 0 temperature is, the more deterministic it will be, meaning it will give the same output every time for the same input. If we have too high of a temperature, the output may not make any sense but too low and we may get repeating sequences of words. 0.9 seems to be a good trade-off. Feel free to play around with this variable as well as other variables that you can see in the documentation as well as other resources I will include in the description. Finally, we are on the last step. Just as the tokenizer encodes our prompt into a format the model can understand, the tokenizer also decodes the output from the model into a format that we can understand. And here we can see our prompt, and then everything here was written by the AI. I will now read the short passage that the AI has generated. Life is a dream to many, to a few it is a nightmare, Plato. That is a fake quote by the way, but the model recognized the philosophical nature of our question and made up a fake quote and attributed it to a famous philosopher. Why is it that sometime in our life, most of us believe we have no choice but to wake up each morning. We feel alone with our pain and struggle through it. We are powerless to change it. We accept our circumstances, but never the fact that life is a dream. Life is a dream just like the sun and the moon, and yet there is no life outside of our dreams. Do you have your own personal definition of what life actually means? We each carry around our own version of our personal definitions of life. Most of us have come up with our own personal definitions based on our own circumstances, circumstances that are caused by family, school, and friends. We get together and discuss what life means to us. Our words do not always come out in the same sentences, but they are. And at that point, the model stops because we have now reached 200 tokens. With regards to the output, I am very impressed. If I was told this was a freshman in high school's introduction to their English paper, I would not doubt it. And thus, reflecting on the output, I would like to revisit this chart. This 2.7 billion parameter model of GPT-3 is the smallest size of GPT-3. And the smallest model of GPT-3 is roughly only 2x the largest GPT-2 model. Research and Transformers shows that as the models get bigger, their performance gets better. Currently, the largest model is GPT-3, the largest version which is 175 billion parameters. I have no doubt that researchers are actively trying to further increase the size of these models. GPT-3, especially the largest one, can probably trick many people in thinking it's human. Given that fact, I'm excited for a future where we have models that exceed a trillion parameters, over five times what GPT-3 is. With more data, more compute, and ever-expanding model sizes, I'm excited for the future of AI. That's all I have for now in this video. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to leave any comments in the comment section regarding questions or issues you're having, and I'll try to help you out. Also, if you have any cool outputs with your own GPT-3 instance, leave them down below and we can check them out. I may further explore GPT-3 in future videos, such in the areas of fine tuning on a custom data set to get more granular answers and to tackle different problems. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, don't forget to subscribe.
Once again, thank you for watching and please have a great day.